Hey, this is Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com. And in this video, we want to talk through how we can architect something in SmartSuite. And a question came up from the SmartSuite community about how we could best architect having events and event attendees. And in this video, I just want to get into my brain a little bit as a SmartSuite consultant and talk about a couple different ways that we could fulfill these requirements. Now, in this particular use case, this was kind of akin to a teacher and students and wanting to track their attendance. But this would work for other kinds of setups, just generically speaking, with events and people who attend those events. Now, the person who asked this question had a pretty good idea. They had the idea of starting with these sessions, the actual events themselves, and wanted to track the people coming to them. And they thought that they would track the students in a multi-select field, meaning that within the actual field data itself, we'd have the ability to select multiple attendees to that. And they were going to start with a form itself, so a multi-select form. And if we go ahead and open this up, the idea would be that the teacher would be able to track the attendance of the students, be able to plug in a date, and then from that multi-select, select which students were in attendance, and then the ones that weren't selected wouldn't be in attendance. Now, I think this is a good idea, a good starting point of how to get there. And I really like that this individual was thinking about the user experience for that teacher that that teacher who's really busy and wants to get the class up and running only wants to quickly select those students. They don't want to create a whole bunch of records. And so I like this idea from the user experience standpoint. Now, the problem with this model is, is typically around the data architecture. And this is where I just brought up some other questions and some other ideas about this. So if we head back into SmartSuite itself, the problem when we're taking a look at a setup like this is that when you manage something like people inside of a multi-select here is a couple of things. One, imagine that these students, maybe you get a new cohort of students in. These students graduate or are done, they're no longer involved, and then you have new students. That means instead of managing records or data inside the system, that means that you're constantly updating the field metadata itself. That means you'd have to be deleting out options, adding in new options, and one of the downstream impacts and problems with that is, well, what about the historical records? Suddenly, if we were to delete out this Jeremy reference here, then that would mean that they wouldn't show up on the session records. It would look like they never attended them. And so we'd have problems with our historical data. Do we get rid of the people who are no longer present and we don't care about their historical attendance? That's where some of these issues start to crop up. The other problem with this is, is you can imagine something like a student, that there's other data we care about those students, not just the name of the student. And that's usually where it lends itself to thinking about a second app, because if we use an actual app and records the data about the students, I just added a couple of fields. You can imagine there might be lots of fields of information about the students that we're tracking. In this simple example, I'm saying which ones are currently enrolled, what's their address. We might have all sorts of other information about those people themselves. And doing something like creating a multi-select here to be able to choose those individuals won't convey any other information about the student record. You're not going to be able to cross-reference them and run different reports on it. And so that setup generally isn't what I'd recommend of using a multi-select field, despite it being a good user experience. So let's talk about one of the most common ways of doing this, which is typically to have some kind of association app between the two. A really common way to architect this is to be able to create a third app, in this case, attendance. And this is what we're going to call an association table or an association app between the sessions and the students. So we've got a linked record to the student, and this is only a single student that we'd select. And we also have a linked record back to the session. And the reason that we do this is because we're able to group two types of objects together and still store data on this record itself. So you're going to see this common structure. We've done other videos on this in the past, including our video on maintaining contact structures inside a smart suite. But in this case, all we're saying is we're relating a student to a session and we might have extra data. Like we're saying, what did you learn today? And we could have an exit ticket. Back when I was a teacher, We'd often ask students, what did you learn today? Or something at the end of the class that just kind of proves, yep, you were paying attention, you know what you were thinking about. So if we create this form, now what this is for is if we go ahead and open up this record, this would be in a scenario where essentially we're trusting the students to do the attendance themselves. 
So if they all have iPads or some kind of device in class, or maybe you just have like a device present, depending on whether this is remote or if it's an in-person session, you know, they'd be able to select the session that it's for. You could have this session and we could have the date show if we wanted to instead. And they could choose their own attendance record uh, and then be able to put in, here's what I learned today. And we'd have other ways to do this. For example, if we didn't want them to see the full class list here, we'd be able to have them type in their email and have that automatically look it up and associate it. So there's lots of tricks around that. But I'd say this is a, a common architecture path to go with because this allows them for more flexibility, right? So now we have the actual students app itself. We could have other data about those students. And we can even have data that we store on this association table or association app, such as what did you learn today? But I presented the solution back to the individual who's asking this question. They said, oh, well, we don't really trust the students to be able to fill in this information themselves. And this isn't a great user experience if it was just the teacher, because we wouldn't want the teacher to have to fill out, here's a sec session record. Now I'm going to add it for this student and submit it and then go ahead and submit this you know, 20 different times, ones for each student. And that totally makes sense. That's why this always comes down to the situational context around this. We have to understand what the specific requirements are. So now we know that we want the teacher to be able to do all the submitting of this. We know that the multi-select isn't the best option. So what other options are available to us? Well, in this case, if we head back into Smart Suite itself, what we can do is let's ignore that attendance app that we created for a second and just think about our sessions and students we could create a many-to-many -many relationship between the sessions and the students. Now, this doesn't have the advantage of being able to store additional data on the attendance record. Instead, this is just either they're there or they're not there. We're not being able to store any other information in that intersection between them. But what this means is that if we just create that relationship, let me go over to our sessions again here, and keeping it really simple, the grid is really just this. We've got our session, we've got a date, and then this is a link to our students. And if we take a look at the field settings, we are allowing linking to multiple records. So on either side of this relationship, on the session, we can link to multiple students, and students can be linked to multiple sessions. And that's what we call a many-to-many -many relationship. So now if we create a form for this, this end-to-end -end form, and I'm just calling it this so that we know what it is. Of course, that's not a good form name for everybody else who's filling it out, but we'd be able to share this form. And now the teacher would be able to put in the date of the event and they're selecting their students. What's great about this is this combines both sets of requirements. This is the better architecture in terms of having the other additional data about the students. And you notice that it's really easy to be able to add students just like it was for the multi-select. But rather than having a multi-select field, what we're doing is we have that many-to-many -many relationship, and it's still easy for the teacher to be able to submit that record. I know this might have been a lot of information if thinking about database relationships and how information is architected, if this is something that you're doing for the very first time. But this is one of the advantages of working with a smart suite consultant such as myself, because we help you think through the different challenges that you're facing and come up with the best ways that we can architect it so you don't find yourself doing things later on like duplicating data or having a structure that doesn't allow you to be flexible in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're offering a 30-minute free consultation over on our website at automationhelpers.com.